Okay, session six of the Subtractor Synthesizer in Reason Essentials. Um, we've been looking at the filter envelope, and we're going to explore a bit more detail on that. Um, I've set the filter frequency um, down fairly low. It's a low-pass filter. Um, and we looked at how the attack deals or governs that when we, when we set the amount of the filter envelope to its maximum. This filter is now fully controlling how this slider operates. So the attack is set somewhere to mid-range so what that does is it, it, it takes some time um, for it to start from the, the setting that we have here to its full amount here. Uh, which because it's a low pass filter is it's fully open allowing everything through including all the high-end harmonics so when we play a key let's just make that a bit slower so we start off without any of the harmonics so we're fully filtering all the harmonics um, keeping to a fairly low note and then it's slowly pushes um, this frequency up to its top levels and then allows more and more higher harmonics in as time goes on. So to hear that again, we start with the low tones and then introduce the higher tones. And if I turn this right down so that the filter is not affecting the note, um, what that is doing is it's starting off with the note there and over time raising this frequency up to its maximum value. Okay, um, if we have a look at the sustain now and the decay, we, we've set the decay rate so it comes up to a maximum and then tails off to a sustained value. Um, up to a maximum, down to the sustained value. And what that's doing is, again, to replicate it by pu pushing the slider, we're coming up, down to a sustained value, and, and the decay changes the rate at which that comes down to its sustained value and then when we release the key it drops altogether. Um, if we take the release up we end up let me just make it so that the filter's controlling that sorry up to a maximum down to a sustained level and then when we release uh, sorry, the, the amplitude envelope's controlling that. So I've put the amplitude release right up so that when I release the key, the note carries on in, in terms of its volume so that we can hear what this is doing to the frequency of the filter. So up to a peak filter, sorry, we start off filtering an amount. Sorry, I've got a sustain on that. Just give me a second. Um, what's going to happen is the amplitude is going to take us up fairly slowly to this being at its maximum setting therefore letting all the high frequencies in then the decay rate will drop us back down to this sustain value which is set here and then when we release the key we'll have a slow release over time now the note will carry on for for, for ever essentially because we've set release at its maximum value um, but but you'll hear how the filter um, changes over time as we release the key. So key on up to a max uh, up to allowing everything through back down to a sustained value for the filter. And now I've released the key. So as you can see then, the filter envelope is controlling this slider here, this, this frequency on the filter, the cutoff frequency on the filter, 
in the same way that the amplitude envelope was controlling the gain or, or the volume uh, on the on the amplitude of the sound. Um, one thing that is different is that we can vary the amount that that filter controls. It's a, it's a, we can take that completely out, in which case it's just set to what we've got here. And then as we introduce this, we get more and more control influenced by, by the filter envelope. Okay, this key here inverts everything. If you, if you look at this funny symbol down here, that's the attack, decay, sustain and release curve inverted. So instead of attack up to a, a peak level, we, we uh, the attack then controls the slope of this curve down to its minimum. The decay controls the slope of the curve up to the sustained value. And then when we release the key, um, the release controls the slope of the curve down to the release value. And the reason for that is is that uh, we might want to, instead of having the filter um, go from its from from this point here up to its maximum, we might want over time for this to come from this point here down to its minimum. So if we invert that and control that. And listen to the sound that that makes now. What we're doing there is we're doing the same as, and then over time, dropping this down. So instead of this now controlling the time it takes for that to be fully open, it now controls the time for that to be fully closed. Okay, let's switch that back on and you can hear that. And let's lengthen that time taken. Okay, let's play a lower note. Okay, so essentially this envelope is then inverted by, by this button being switched on here. Okay then. Um, filter 1 and filter 2 can be linked in um, series so filter 2 if you remember is a low pass 12 dB per octave filter uh, and we can introduce that uh, in, in addition to filter 1 so that we can um, filter out uh, different frequencies with this filter, say we wanted to have a bandpass filter to take out, let's say we wanted that a, a notch filter to take out a certain set of frequencies in the mid range, but then we still wanted a low pass filter to um, be able to control um, uh, some of the higher end, um, harsher harmonics, so we can take them out with this filter. having taken out a particular range that we, we want to take out with this notch filter. We can then use the low pass filter to take out the harsher high end um, harmonics. So I think that's pretty much covered everything in the filter section. Um, in the next session we'll start to look at something we touched on in the in the previous session to this just to change the square wave uh, and we'll talk about phase modulation and the different uh, effects that that has on the sound. Um, I hope you're enjoying these sessions, I hope they're not too detailed for anyone. The, the idea is to, to be giving some people a fairly comprehensive introduction to basic subtraction synthesis using what is now becoming a, a fairly classic in its own right um, that the uh, Reason Essentials subcontractor. Um, please do leave comments, let me know how these are going and if you've got any suggestions let me know those as well. Thanks very much, see you next time.